All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investment Trade Findings and Adjustments for Tuesday night, the 28th of July. I've got keys here and and uh, plain and simple. We're going to go through, this is more of a train today than anything else. So today we're going to go through just a simple training on some things that I've learned over time. I want to start off with Visa. By all metrics, Visa beat top and bottom line on three. They beat on payments. Yet, again, we're coming back to earnings forgiveness. Wall Street expected earnings per share to slip 26% to a dollar and the revenue is supposed to be at 4.81 billion. They actually came in at 1.06 cents a share. So according to oh investor Zach's, according to Zach's investment research, they beat by four cents. Uh, as a combined analyst, they beat by three cents. Revenue was down to 4.81 billion. They beat by 30 billion there as well. Now, payment volume declined 10% to 1.9 trillion. Though the expectation when it says though that beat views, they're expecting 1.90 trillion. So they beat that by 500 billion. And Cross-border volume fell by 37% or 47%, excluding intra-European payments. Bunk. We know MasterCards were down significantly more than that, it's as okay. well as American we'll Express. You. It's okay. By Sorry. all intensive purposes here, hey, baby. or by okay. every... Did a little bonk. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everyone's understanding... Uh, by everyone's understanding, we we have a beat top bottom. We have a beat all over the place. Top line, bottom line, um, payments. In fact, I went down a little bit more. This was Zach's. I think I went down a little bit more. And I found um, Barron's article on them. Here they are down by 2%. Despite reporting fiscal third quarter results that were largely in line or beat. But because their revenue fell, which they were already expecting that, a 22% increase than before. They um, they went down. So something pretty unique about uh, about Visa. If you look at Visa on a chart. Visa has a history of, of having a drop and then they move up after earnings. A drop after earnings, we'll use the most recent two, right? Earnings, they had a drop and then they go higher. Earnings in, I guess, April. That's not right. Earnings should be right here. But Visa in the past has a history of having earnings, pulling back to a support level, and then moving higher. So if you're going to look at earnings for me on Visa, Visa After Hours is trading at... 193.52. When we compare that with the chart, the 50-day is 194.36. So the question is, 
will they hold their 90 day? They're breaking their, their center pivot point at 193.85, but will they be there tomorrow? So if I'm looking at Visa, my expectations, it will probably go down and test the 200 day, 184.82. And then you'll expect to see Visa head its way back up to over 200. Kevin, why does Visa do that? I don't know. The most previous earnings or other earnings was right here where it was about the same thing. It took three days to kind of understand it and off Visa headed to higher highs. This used to be more common with Visa. I think now it's doing a little bit better job, so to speak, but plain and simple, we're most likely going to see a bit of a pullback. It'll be somewhere in the 194 to 184 range and then it continues to march higher. Visa is an excellent example where you're not seeing, so I should go Visa is an excellent example of where you are not seeing earnings forgiveness. It's just not happening, which again gives me thought that we are probably going to go down and come close to testing some lows that we've had previously before we start uh, heading higher. And probably we're going to have a negative year this year and we won't see any gains in our market if we do have any gains till sometime after uh, the election, which is November 4th. We're in for a bugger of a time for the next three months. Pay special attention tomorrow at noon. Pay special attention to what the FOMC says. If you see them passing the buck off and on to the GOP, GDP, GOP, excuse me, uh, we're probably in trouble. And we won't get the market bounce that we got the first time that we threw stimulus at COVID-19. So I'm disappointed. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I, I will truly be disappointed sometime, uh, sometime next week, probably the end of next week, if we haven't seen Visa rebound, that'll be very disappointing to me. All right, um, an email. I found it very interesting and you gotta remember, plain and simple, there are a million different ways to skin a cat. I think there are a million different ways to make a buck in the stock market. There are not a million different ways to consistently be profitable over a period of time. Um, I received an email, pretty simple. It was nothing more than, hey, I followed the advice from a gorilla trade. I think gorilla trades along with safe option strategies are probably the two advisory recommendations that are are real or most likely trading with some real money i say that because when things went haywire they stopped sending out trades they said hey it's not a good time to be sending trades out they had a track record where they got their butts handed to them march april and may and part of that time, they were stopping just trying to deal with trades from January and February. But most recently, an advice was to enter a bull call on BABA. Bought in October, 220, 250, 260 for a $4.40 debit. It looks good to me, but I want a second opinion. As I looked at this one, plain and simple, 
I like the risk to reward, which is one risk for for one point one five rewards, but earnings is in two and one half weeks. So I made the comment, I said, hey, the way it's set up, not bad. Out there in time that 90 days, not bad. Not gonna get through another earnings. I'm a little wary of a bullish trade through September and October, the third worst and the worst month in our stock market historically. Maybe not a good time to be sending profitable or uh, profitable um, bullish trades out. But earnings was two and a half weeks away. So if I was in this trade, I would be in it for a pre-earnings run. And then that's it. At that point, I'm out of dodge. I'm out of dodge. I'm going to be done. So. This individual sent a uh, a question based off of what, what I said, and they were very polite. Thank you for your email. Option trades usually two or three months out. Since earnings are announced quarterly, earnings will be announced 90% of the time during that period. So 90% of the time they place a trade, they're going to go through a higher probability of having a trend change. So this is the problem, right? Any thoughts? Going back to my thoughts here. If I'm gonna go to a different color. If they are going through earnings 90 percent of the time then 90 percent of the time they are taking earnings slash trend risk in their trades second thing that came out to me if they are hoping for a stock bounce back. They aren't adjusting, which means they have a directional one out of three chance or 33% chance of being profitable over the long run, which means it's unsustainable. It's just unsustainable. And it's interesting because it's that type of, of looking at where you're getting trades from, who they're doing it, why they're doing it, that mathematically, these guys are going to lose you money. The odds are what they are. They might be the more integratable um, advisory out there, but that does not mean that they're going to be profitable. Common sense tells you that um, plain and simple, you have more likely like a, what, 60 cents? I think it's two out of three. Numbers are a two out of 3% chance during earnings. You will have a trend change in the current trend of the stock. The smart thing to tell me would have been, hey, it's a debit trade. You'll get some implied volatility. It'll kick up in price. You'll get out before earnings. They didn't say that, though. They said our option trades are two to three months out. 
there is plenty of time for the stock to come back if necessary. So, not a methodology, it's a stock picker, not a way to fix trades. The odds are one out of 3% chance. And uh, again, eventually, even though we are coming through the, the um, let's face it, one of the biggest bull markets uh, in, in history, at least in the top three, um, the numbers are going to catch up to you and it's not going to work out. All right. I, I'm not a Kobe Bryant fan. Uh, I don't like the fact that uh, he, he cheated on his wife. And of course, I'm not a million, hundred million dollar athlete. I know it's hard to believe I don't have a bunch of women throwing themselves at me all the time. But I do like, and I did like, his work ethic. I also liked uh, Kobe's 10 rules. And I think this applies to life. I think it applies to your trading. Every single day, you've got to get better. Now, better at something. It doesn't necessarily mean trading. But I, this also falls into the 1% rule. If I want to be better than other people, I got to spend 1% more time working than my competition. At the end of the year compounding, that's a 3,800% gain over competition. I need to spend the time getting better every single day. And it doesn't mean by doing twice as much research or by doing twice as much this or that. It can be as little as doing 1% more than a competitor. 1% more effort in a day gives you huge amounts of returns. Proving them wrong. It used to be said in my earlier days. Hey, if you tell Kevin he can't do it, he's going to find a way to do it. I also look at everyone else's stuff. And the first thing I do is prove them wrong. Now, most people can be proven wrong. But if it's a safe option strategies or a guerrilla trades way where it's not, where it's ignorance versus stupidity or dishonesty, then I'm going to give them more leeway. With that said, the hardest thing for me to do is to work on my weaknesses. I hate admitting when I'm wrong. I hate being wrong. And admitting that you're wrong doesn't fix the problem. You have to find a way to make your weaknesses strengths. When people talk to me, my biggest weakness in trading, why I don't do a whole lot of spread trading, is emotions. Uh, I hate losing. It tears me up inside. If I was to be a spread trader, I would be pissed off, angry at my family, treating those that I love most the worst. I would not be a good individual. So I've adjusted my trading methodology to allow me to be wrong. Um, I'm the best one. I'm the I just said I'm the best one. Uh, I'm the one that that I'm the only one that I know of that that isn't acceptable for a loss, and that's not okay in my book. Well, I'm going to take a loss on this one. I'll just suffer through it. That doesn't get you anywhere. Execute what you practiced, of course. Practice what you preach. Learn from greatness. I do most of my research on Warren Buffett. When I'm looking at people in the industry, Warren Buffett is who I'm trying to learn my greatness from. You have to learn from your wins and your losses. Going back to what I said last night, if you don't think and ignore the fact that the market could and most likely will go down 20 to 35%, you have not learned from your mistakes. 
I, I giggle when people think they're learning from their mistakes when they trade. You don't learn from a loss. It's a loss. 99.9% .9 certainty that you're going to make the same mistake again, just under a different set of circumstances. Stop thinking that you're educating yourself when you lose in a trade. That is not correct. Practice mindfulness. Again, this comes down to due diligence. I do due diligence in everything. Due diligence in my kids' sports, due diligence in trading my money, due diligence in where I buy a house, where I spend my time. It, it's just smart. Be ambitious. Simple methodology or simple comment here. It's better to shoot for the stars and miss than aim for a skunk and hit. Believe in your team. Believe in your system when things get tough. Fall back on past experience. When things get tough at home, you know, my team is my family. Oh, I'll be honest with you. Last week you heard me. Uh, I wanted to struggle a kid. I really would. It's growing and, and building your team to be the best team that they can be. The best key, the best Jeffrey, the best um, Rick Schlegel. Who's my other guy? Joe Durkle. Crying out loud, my Michael Verdon. Helping the guys that have come and passed through to be the best that they can be. That's part of believing in your team, but believing is an action word. So find ways to make them better. And then number 10, learn storytelling. Tell your story. Tell your story with enthusiasm. Tell about the losses, the wins. Be willing to open up and to pull down those barriers of embarrassment, those barriers of mistakes. Um, brag a little bit. Brag a little bit and, and, and be proud of who you are. Um, again, never has been a Kobe Bryant fan since he got caught cheating on his wife. But I do like the man's work ethic and, and how hard he worked to get to where he was. I think we can all use that in our day. Trade. Trade for the class. Facebook leap long calls. I understand my expectation is that I am going to have to dollar cost average this position once or twice throughout the life of the trade. Well, Kevin, why would you put it on now if you're going to dollar cost average? I would put the trade on now because I could be wrong on having to dollar cost average. Adjusting. Add monthly short calls to lower the cost basis, which means, right? which means I will have an option requirement to fulfill a bear call calendar. I have to make sure that my account 
can handle a five or ten dollar bearish spread for a month. Kevin, why don't you add long puts? It's because of the cost. I would much rather dollar cost average and spend my money there than adding long puts. If I was looking at where I would initiate a trade today, even though I've got some already in place, I want as much time as possible. I would probably go to a June 2022, giving me two years. The neat thing is because it's a leap, I can try to be a little bit on the cheap side. I would be choosing a June 22, 250 call. I would be looking at a $38.50 price. The neat thing is this means that it has to get above my break even, right? is going to be 288.30. If you're into those probability things, right? <laughs> if you're into the probabilities, there's a 69.87% chance that this trade exits with its maximum profit, which just means that it can be profitable. Your break even is at 288.50. Probability for any profit is 75.27%. If you want to go a little bit farther and analyze in a trade lab, so to speak, There you go. Pretty easy to see where it can go. Kevin, we have a problem here. They lost Disney as one of their main advertisers. I get it. But Disney's not putting out any movies until December. Disney's success on Disney Plus came through Facebook and social media ads. Again, I understand that some people aren't going to like Facebook. With that said, it's still has not in any way, shape, or form changed the fact that the most outreach by social media is Facebook. They have the best marketing pool in the world. They have the most subscribers in the world. They've got the old man Facebook, the young generation Instagram. Um, they've also got a third platform. I forgot what it is right now. Um, they hit all genders, all age groups. They can reach half the people in the world. The law of big numbers says... WhatsApp, thank you. Keep just typed in WhatsApp as their third one. Um, plain and simple, they can reach half the people in the world. The people they can't reach, um, in all honesty, probably do not have the money or care about the advertising in the first place. That's a general statement. It's not meant to be an exact 
But if I was looking to place a trade, uh, I would most likely do a 250 leap call. Understanding the next month or two, I'm going to be adding to it. For my account, it would be a 3830 excuse me, $3,800, a $3,850 trade in my account, where I'm probably going to throw something like another two grand at it once or twice. I would wholeheartedly expect to throw another 2000 at it and then maybe another 16 to 1200 at it. I usually like to, plain and simple, oh my goodness. Uh, I usually like to see plain and simple lose half its value to dollar cost average it. So that way it only has to go up half as much to be at a break even. So that is the trade for today. I do hope this has been helpful and a learning experience for you today. Uh, I do hope that you see I don't badmouth everyone, just most of the competition that's out there, but that I, I try to do so in a logical and with some type of statistical backing behind me. If I was looking for a trade, I would be doing Facebook. You could 100% put this trade on after Facebook's earnings. You might miss a pop to the upside, but you might not. That's the trade I would do. Guys, I appreciate you being with me here tonight. Thank you for letting me teach you a little bit about what I was thinking today. I will get this posted most likely this evening or tomorrow morning, and uh, we'll go from there. Guys, have a wonderful evening. Appreciate your time. Be smart, be safe, trade smartly, and uh, I'll talk to you. Uh, well, Kira, I will talk to you Thursday morning or the beginning of next week. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.